the green shed. Um, I hope you're all okay in the lockdown and trying to keep on top of your work and staying well. So uh, I've set you some work for this week, which is largely about um, keywords, but there's a couple of tricky concepts that I've put in there that I'm going to try and explain to you in this video. Um, but do it in your book or do it in your folder. This is not one I want sending to me right now. Uh, there will be an assessment coming soon, which will be based around it. So make sure you do it and make sure you understand. So here's the words on the first screen. Conflict, war, peace, harmony, justice, reconciliation, genocide, tolerance, just war theory and jihad. And your job is to find out good definitions of all of those words. Of course, you know some of them. We've done some of them in class. So it's a case of perhaps repeating them or seeing if you can remember them uh, and making sure we have a really good knowledge. So the sort of words... Uh, that may well come up in the multi-choice questions as definitions, but it's certainly what we call the technical language that you will get marks for all the way through your exams. So the first few on there should be pretty straightforward, but two at the bottom there, just war theory and jihad, um, will be new concepts, so I'm going to try and explain. So just war theory, if something is just, we know that means that it's something is fair or has good reason. So a theory uh, about having a war or giving good reason or being able to say this war is uh, just and okay to have um, was written uh, back in medieval times by a philosopher called say, Thomas Aquinas who you will have come across before in year seven when we were talking about um, the first cause theory of the universe. Same fella obviously spent a lot of time thinking but he said um, that for a war to be just, it has to have a good cause, a just cause, a reason for it, in other words. For example, um, self-defense, if someone's invaded, um, but not to go out and conquer and take lands from other people, which, of course, lots of wars have been fought over over the centuries. That would not be considered just in this theory. He also said that um, the war must be declared by a proper authority. So a government or a leader, not you or I. You and I could have a fight or a conflict, but we could not start a war. Not that we're going to, obviously. Um, and you might think of that in religious terms. A, a holy war might well be authorised or started by uh, a holy leader, um, a leader of, of the faith. Um, he also said that the reason for the war must be to promote good or avoid evil and also to restore peace. For example, um, if someone is attacked, if a country has been attacked um, and, the, and the interpretation of that attack is evil, taking over land, taking over faith, don't forget when this was written many years ago, lots and lots of war was fought between different groups with different beliefs. Um, but with the aim of the war being to restore peace and justice after the war was over, that is key. And then other Christians, sorry I forgot to say Thomas Aquinas is a Christian, but other Christians have developed this since to say that war must be a last resort. When um, countries fall out, when groups fall out, um, they normally go through diplomatic means to try and solve the conflict. That means talking and agreeing with solutions and sometimes even go as far as, as uh, taking measures uh, to restrict um, the country's trade, for example, and things like that. So um, to, to try to, I guess, um, put pressure on a country to change their decisions over things. So fighting in a war conflict is always going to be seen as a last resort um, when you've tried everything else. And that's key. The war should be fought with proportionality, with just enough force to achieve victory and only against legitimate targets, i.e. civilians should be protected. Really important that a war is just in that. And it might be, you know, easy to say back in the day when weapons were being advanced and developed that, you know, what is a reasonable force? What is proportional, um, just enough to get the conflict done, for example? Um, and that gives us a, a whole thought when we think of things like nuclear war or biological war or sort of more modern warfare, where perhaps, you know, wiping out a whole city with a nuclear bomb, for example, would be seen as, as um, not proportional to the cause. It would be too much um, because it would kill, kill civilians and everything else as well. So that's what that means. And then 
Um, the good which is achieved by the war must be greater than the evil that led to war. Really important factor uh, in Christianity or in any faith is about good and evil. Good always should defeat evil. And uh, it's still things it's used by Christians there on the PowerPoint, but um, governments too. These theories are all sort of common sense um, and having good reason. So just war theory is good reason for war. It's a very common question in the exam. Uh, because it argues really just war versus teachings about peace, which we'll come on to in a, a future lesson. So the next one, jihad. Now, jihad is a word that is often misinterpreted by many. Often you see it in tabloid newspapers as headlines about uh, jihad this, jihad that, with not really explaining what jihad is. But obviously we can associate it with Islam. And it's important to note that there are two types of jihad. One's called a greater jihad, jihad, and as it says there, the personal inner struggle to be a good Muslim and improve spirituality, a constant duty and seen as an act of worship. So every Muslim believes that they have their own personal greater jihad about being a better Muslim or being a better person. And it might involve things like striving to obviously follow the five pillars of Islam is fundamental to all Muslims. Forgiveness is really important to work for social justice. That means to be fair to everybody, not to discriminate, uh, not to be prejudiced and uh, share wealth with those that don't have it, for example. Um, studying the Quran is fundamental and important to Muslims and is seen as part of your greater jihad, the struggle to be a better Muslim. Helping those in need, which I've kind of mentioned in the social justice factor there, uh, and avoiding being negative, negative traits such as greed or laziness which of course none of us are going to get into in this breakdown of uh, the lockdown, should we say, are we? Okay, avoiding temptations such as alcohol. We should know, um, if we don't know, well, alcohol is haram in Islam, um, as is making profit from the sale of alcohol. Haram, of course, means not allowed. Um, and sometimes things are tempting and avoiding temptations as such as alcohol. There's lots of things we're tempted by um, and not falling into temptation is really important part of the greater jihad. And here's a quote from the Quran which says, no bearers of burdens will bear the burden of another, which kind of sums up the, the personal struggle. And then there's the lesser jihad. Now the lesser jihad is, is very important how this is thought about because this is often interpreted by some people to mean uh, a holy war or a just war. This is kind of the just war theory from Islamic perspective. And it says there, look, it's about defending Islam from threat. So uh, although Islam is um, a religion of peace, there has been occasions, of course, which we see um, historically and, and even present day about Muslims taking up arms against enemies when they feel that they have been persecuted. In other words, to defend the faith. And in the Quran, it says, uh, permission has been given to those who are being fought because they are wronged. And indeed, Allah is competent to give them victory. In other words, if you've been wronged, um, God says you can fight back and Allah will make sure you are victorious in the defense of your faith. So, of course, all faith is about interpretation and how some people have interpreted that um, can be seen as, as, well, throughout history, uh, reasons behind war or fighting of any sort. But it does say um, that although the Quran does talk about Islam and uh, allowing violence to defend it, it does talk about not going beyond the limits of what is necessary uh, for the defence. So, for example, um, in, the, in the just war theory, we talked about proportionality. Well, it's the same concept, isn't it? Fight in the way of Allah, those who fight against you, but do not transgress. Um, and that will, when we do nuclear war again in a future lesson, that will be a useful um, quote. Um, it's also very important, again, and this is very similar to just war theory, if you see, is about how to make peace, or it's important to make peace um, and put in trust in God. And all forms of war, again, must be approved by a religious leader. This is sounding familiar, then it is, because it comes back to that holy war, just war theory we mentioned before it also mentions there look in self-defense and also not used to convert people to islam or gain land so the lesser jihad as you can see strict rules 
um, about how it can be carried out is very similar to the just war theory. For instance, it must be in the defence of Allah. No harm must be done. Now, that's a difficult one to interpret, isn't it? Because no harm must be done in a fight um, becomes very um, interesting. Peace must be restored and mercy must be shown. So quite strict rules. So there you go. So the greater jihad and the lesser jihad. The greater jihad is a personal struggle. The lesser jihad is about um, defending the faith and supporting the faith. OK, so I hope that's been useful. Um, I have taken those notes actually from the BBC Bite Size pages, which you can go back and read or you can read on here, of course. And I hope that helps. So have a think, write down your own notes, work out these these two things, because they're really important when we come to looking at questions such as um, war can never be just. And then you have to give your evaluation of that. And on one side of the coin, you've got religious teachings say no. Religion says we do not fight, we do not kill. Um, loads of teachings about peace, which we'll get into. Um, but on the other side of the coin, um, religious believers say, yeah, absolutely, no way we should have a, a, a war unless these are the circumstances and they are your just war and um, jihad factors. OK, so there you go. Um, I hope that's useful and um, you're working well at home. And in the next couple of weeks, I shall be putting out there an assessment about this for you to do. So hopefully the notes that you make in the meanwhile will be useful. Please don't send them to me. Don't share them with me at this point. Obviously, when we do an assessment, um, you can share that on Teams, only on Teams, please not on email. And uh, you'll find a tab in the assignments tab which says turn in in which point you can submit the work for me to mark. OK, stay well, everybody. And uh, very soon we'll be back at school and uh, I'll see